Doug Sisterson gets excited when he explains his job to visitors at Argonne National Laboratory. It's about insurance. He's a research meteorologist studying climate change. It's not what most people expect when they think of the lab, traditionally viewed as a nuclear research facility. And I think the labs are being utilized now more for applied science. What are the nation's problems that, that, the, that the brain power and the trust that's at the National Labs can really help the government in setting policy for a, a wider range of issues than just nuclear? That brain power at Argonne includes Charles Makel. He's a computational scientist helping the Centers for Disease Control understand how the H1N1 swine flu virus might affect the U.S. population during the anticipated outbreak this fall. Argonne's role is on the technology side, to put it broadly, and these computational models that we're developing here will be incredibly important for helping people understand, people in the government, what they should do or what they should recommend and what the costs and benefits are of various actions that they could possibly take. These are two examples of the extensive role the National Laboratory plays in daily life. Argonne Director Eric Isaac says expanding the public's understanding of that role is an aim of the laboratory's open house. We do this because uh, what we're doing here is very important for the national interest. From national security to national health, scientists at Argonne are on the cutting edge, working to make everyday life easier safer, and even longer. Isaac says the lab's important role is underscored by President Obama's increase in funding. This year, Argonne received about $180 million in federal stimulus funds, allowing larger budgets for programs on alternative energy, battery-powered cars, and nuclear energy. Uh, we think nuclear energy is a very important part of the green energy solutions for the future. The benefit of nuclear power was one of the lessons Kathleen Brandeis learned about on her visit to Argonne's open house. This little ball, if it was uranium, would light up 375,000 homes? That, that's unbelievable that uranium-235 could do all that. I mean, that's just one thing. That's the kind of reaction Eric Isaacs is looking for. I'd like people to walk away saying, it's very cool what they do at Argonne. We'll actually show you some blowing. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago. Notice how I have to keep turning it? <laughs>